Parshat Chukat contains one of the most heartbreaking stories of the Torah. And that is the decree that God makes against Moshe Rabbeinu, our teacher Moses, that he is not to enter the land of Israel after he strikes the rock, bringing forth water instead of speaking to the rock. And all of the commentators struggle to find out exactly what it is that Moshe Rabbeinu did wrong. What type of a sin was it? And it's very difficult to understand, as the Talmud says, that Hashem takes those who are close to him into very, very close account. He scrutinizes their deeds more than the average person. So perhaps what Moshe did, if another person had done it, would have been nothing. But for somebody on his level, it was considered a sin. But what exactly was that sin? And again, if you look at the commentators, they give many different opinions. But there's a fascinating comment in the Midrash Rabbah. And the Midrash explains that it's not so much a sin, but there's a different reason to it. Hashem said to him, how can it be that you, the shepherd that led the flock out of Egypt, should go into the land of Israel and desert and to leave your flock behind? Hashem had decreed already 40 years before this, before this event, that the generation that left Egypt would not come into the land of Canaan. And Moshe therefore understood he was going to take the new generation in. But at the end of his life, Hashem says to him, Moshe, it's not right. How can you leave them? How can you abandon your flock? Instead, you should be buried with them in the wilderness. So that when the time comes in the future of the resurrection of the dead, you will bring them into the land of Canaan. This is an incredible idea. This is leadership. Moshe's flock, his main community, were the people that he took out of Egypt. The new generation that would go in, they were the flock of Joshua in, in many ways. But he had to remain with his flock. There's a famous story about a great Hungarian scholar <clears throat> who was in a shul in Hungary, but he was offered a position to be a Rosh Hashiva, to sit in Jerusalem and to learn. This would be in the, in the 19th century. So he wrote to his mentor, his teacher, Rav Moshe Shik, the Maram Shik, and he asked for a blessing for his new position. And the Maram Shik wrote back to him and he said, I'm not, giving you my, I'm not giving you my blessing. We trained you in the yeshiva in Pressburg to become a community rabbi and to help us curb all of the forces of assimilation, all of the forces that were trying to knock Orthodox Judaism. And we need you here in the diaspora. You're a captain. You cannot abandon the ship. You have to stay here, as nice as it would be to go to Jerusalem and you wouldn't have any of these problems. You could just sit and teach and learn. But this is where you have to be. You cannot abandon your flock. And so it was that Hashem said to Moshe Rabbeinu, I know that you have a great desire to come into the land of Israel. I know that you prayed many, many times, but you're not going to come in. You're not going to abandon your flock. You're going to remain with them even in death. I wish you a Shabbat Shalom.